Now, the type of workloads that we were deploying up until now were pretty much all long running applications. So things like websites and services, something that keeps running continuously. And if something goes wrong, uh, these uh, services or applications get rescheduled and they will just start running again. The other type of workloads you uh, sometimes need to run are workloads that perform a particular task. And once that task is completed, they stop running. There's no uh, sense in restarting them or running them again uh, uh, after they're done. Now, an example of a workload like that would be, let's say, doing a backup or generating some daily reports. It does not make real sense to keep the reporting workload running continuously. It only needs to run when it's generating the report. Once the task generates the report, it can go away. If the task fail, you can configure it to, let's say, restart automatically or not even to restart at all. Kubernetes has a feature called job or a resource called jobs, and you can use this resource to run such workloads. The job resource can uh, create one or more pods, and then it can track the number of successful completions of those pods. The job resource ensures that the pods are run to completion. You could achieve a similar behavior only using pods, but then you'd have to manage the pods lifecycle in case the pods fail or it gets rescheduled. So let's run a simple job that does nothing but sleeps for a minute. So we'll create a job called sleepjob.yaml. And we're going to I'm going to paste it in. Now, notice that I'm setting the restart policy for this job to uh, never. Now, default value in pods is uh, always. However, uh, the job resource does not support that restart policy. The job resource supports the uh, two values, never and on failure, meaning that the pods will either never be restarted or the pods will only be restarted uh, if there's a failure. So let's deploy this job. So I'm going to say kubectl, kubectl apply minus f sleep job. So the job is created and then we can do the same thing uh, with jobs just like we would do with any other resource. Uh, uh, we can list the job we can describe the job. So we can say kubectl describe job, sleep on the job. And I'll show you, um, the describe command will show you more details about the job. You'll see the number of completions, for example, the parallelism that we'll talk about later, and then the actual containers that we wanted to run as part of this job. Now let's look at the pod that was created or the pod that this job created rather. So this pod is running uh, because we set it to uh, one minute. So it's just sleeping for 60 seconds. And then after a minute, the pod will stop running. However, it's not going to be deleted. So the nor job nor a Kubernetes will delete the pod. So let's see if the pod has completed. kubectl get pods. So it's still running, but it should be completed. And there you go. So Notice the status was running before and now the status uh, is completed. And then similarly happens with the job resource. So let's run the job. So the job resource uh, stays around until we go and explicitly delete it. And then if we go and delete this job, it's also going to delete the pod. But you'll notice the name of the job and you'll notice that the completions uh, column shows one out of one. Now, by default, Kubernetes sets the number of completions to one, but you can change that uh, by setting a different value in the completions field. So let's say we want to create another job where uh, we want to sleep three times, not just once. So uh, let's do that and let's create a new file. Let's call it three sleeps dot YAML and I'll paste it in. It's very similar to the previous definition. The only difference is that this time we set the completion number to three instead of one. So let's deploy this job as well. kubectl apply three sleeps. And let's look at the job. So the previous previous one is still around and the second one has started and there's zero out of three completions. 
So as soon as the first job will finish, this will be around 63 or 64 seconds, then the column will be updated and it will show one out of three. Uh, the job will execute the pods one after another, and then Kubernetes will mark the job completed when all three pods successfully complete. So all three pods will have to run without any failures. Now there's also a, a feature that allows you to execute the pods in parallel, and this is where the parallelism setting comes in. Uh, using the setting, you can define how many pods can run in parallel. So let's use the, the same three sleeps uh, job. Now let's create a new file and we'll call it three, three sleeps, sleeps and parallel dot YAML. And in addition to three completions, we're also setting the parallelism to two. So let's see what that means. So if we clear here, let's just see how our pods are doing. Uh, so it looks like one of the pods from the three sleeps job has completed and the second one is running, right? So it's going one after another, it's doing it sequentially. So let's deploy the parallel job. So we'll say three sleeps parallel. So it created the jobs, it, the job rather, and it, it looks exactly the same here. So zero out of three, the second one is still one out of three. But now if we look at the pods, you'll see that there's two of them running at the same time. And this is because we set the parallelism value, we set it to two. Now let's consider what happens if, um, if one of the pods keep failing. So what the job will do, it'll keep recreating them and then retrying them based on the back off limit setting. Now the back off limit setting is on uh, the spec field and it specifies the number of retries before Kubernetes considers the job failed. Kubernetes sets the default value for this field to six and then it'll recreate the pods with an exponential back of delay. Now the back of delay means that if the first pod fails, the controller will wait for 10 seconds before recreating it. Then if it fails again, it will wait for 20 seconds and so on up until a total of six minutes of delay. Kubernetes resets the back of delay either when you delete the pod or when the pod completes successfully. In addition to the back of limit, you can also terminate a job using the active deadline settings, uh, second setting uh, the setting represents how long a job can run regardless of how many pods it creates. Now, if we consider the previous example, and if we would set the active deadline seconds to 10, that job will fail after 10 seconds. Kubernetes will terminate the pods and then set the job status to deadline exceeded. So let's look at the this example where we're gonna create a new job then, and we're gonna make it fail on purpose. So failing job dot YAML, uh, we're setting the completions to three, but we're also setting the active deadline seconds to 20 seconds. So this, uh, the active deadline allows or uh, specifies a time for how long a job can run. But since our job and our pods are sleeping for 60 seconds, we're pretty much setting ourselves uh, or Kubernetes up for failure. So let's deploy this one. So we'll say Kubernetes, uh, kubectl apply minus f failing job dot yaml. So this job, let's look at the pods, kubectl get pods. Uh, so the job will create a pod, but then after 20 seconds, uh, the pod will get terminated and the job will fail with the deadline exceeded reason. So let's look at that. So it's still running, it's close to 20 seconds. Uh, there you go. So you'll see that the failing job, the first one in the list here, is being terminated. We could also see this if we describe the job, failing job, job. Uh, you'll notice here that the reason was that the deadline was exceeded and it's saying job was active longer than specified deadline. 